Ron. Thank you, Thank you. Ron. Bye-bye. All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, wow. Wow, another week in the books. Another week in the books, Steve, yeah. It was a great week. I had a good week. Though. We I had, we a, had a lot of good week. stuff going on this week. We sure did. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean, I don't know? I didn't do much. I just sat over here buying a computer. Well... All right, stop complaining. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you both. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for us. We are out of here for the weekend. Keep it right here. You got Matt Connerton Unleashed coming up uh, at 4 p.m. Followed by Granite State of Mind. Then at 8 p.m. you have Retro Spectrum Radio. That is all tonight, Friday, right here on WMNH. you have your health be thankful for it and keep away from all these drugs and stuff that the kids are pushing today this hour on wmnh is sponsored by cgi business solutions located at 5 dartmouth drive in auburn they serve all your business needs including employee benefits planning corporate design and business administration investments and wealth management and customized business insurance solutions Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Plymouth Toes, Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Plymouth Toes, Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Plymouth Toes, Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. You are listening to WMNHLP, Manchester's radio, broadcasting at 95.3 megahertz frequency modulation from the top of 1000 Elm Street. Our studios are located at 1045 Elm Street and licensed to Manchester Public Television Service in Manchester, New Hampshire, USA.
everybody. Happy Friday. Here we go. It is that time again. Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious, and it is a glorious day outside, downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. It's so glorious, I can't say New Hampshire. Downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc., Today is Friday, March 24, 2023. Friday is my favorite day around here at WMNH. We have a busy full day, and I love it. Uh, By the way, speaking of busy and full, so I I played a little extra track there. I I opened today just because it uh, it popped into my head. Uh, Yes, it's a band I used to be in, Shadow Sanctuary. I played a little uh, Wrath of Elements. Uh, I played it once on the show before and got some pretty good response. And then I saw uh, my old friend Jay Bello in the Facebook live chat. And, of course, uh, Jay uh, is of, uh, from the band uh, Chasing the Devil. Uh, way back when I first met Jay, uh, back in the day, as I think the young people say that, right, uh, back in the day, uh, Jay was in a band called Purge D.I. Uh, but uh, today he is in Chasing the Devil, and I do love that song, Beautiful Nightmare. And so I saw Jay. Jay, hi, if you're still listening. Figured I'd... Uh, so I pop in there, figured I'd play that. Such a great track. I look forward to some new music from those guys. I've I've seen uh, hints of things on social media, but uh, I look forward to some new stuff. Although it'll be hard to top that. That's such a great song. That gets stuck in my head, and I'm not just saying that uh, because of my friendship with those guys. Uh, I th- That song absolutely gets stuck in my head. Now that I've listened to it just now, it'll be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. I'm one of those people, and I think this is common, so I, that's why I say I'm one of those people. I don't think this is unusual, but I've always got a song. I've always got a soundtrack running in the back of my mind. Um, sometimes it's a curse, and sometimes it's uh, okay, but <laughs> that's one of those songs. If I were to make a soundtrack of songs that do get stuck in the back of my mind, uh, that would definitely be on it. Uh, Beautiful Nightmare by Chasing the Devil. But like I said, we do have a full day on Fridays, of course. We have this program coming up in the second hour. Speaking of music, we're going to have some live music here in studio. Uh, we've got members of the band. Uh, might be the full band. I'm not sure. Pretty Late will be joining us in studio. And uh, I think they're going to play a few songs, do a little uh, acoustic set for us. And uh, that's all we really do here on the show is uh, when, when we have musicians come in and play, because I every once in a while, it's funny, you know, Jenny does the booking and she was commenting recently how, you know, bands, uh, sometimes uh, uh, bands will want to bring in, you know, the, the amps and the a full drum kit and everything. And it's like, oh, no, that's not really going to work here. <laughs> but if you want to come in and do an acoustic thing, you know, you can bring in a you can't bring a drum set in here, but you can you can bring a hand drum, a, a djembe. I'm never sure if I'm saying that correctly, or some bongos or something. That's what uh, Gnarly Darling did when they came in and played, and it was spectacular. Anyway, so uh, Pretty Late will be with us today here in the second hour of Matt Connerton Unleashed. Then, immediately after this show at 6 p.m., we have Granite State of Mind, hosted by the great Rob Azevedo and Polly Stone. And I think they've got a couple of musical guests uh coming up on their show as well so lots of music it is an evening of music here uh and then immediately well not immediately after granite state of mind but at 8 p.m i am back for retro spectrum radio with Paul c every friday night from 8 to 11 p.m i have the honor and privilege of being one of paul's co-hosts on that show along with our friends dj steve and uh mike from queen city cabinetry who also happens to be one of our great sponsors here at WMNH, Queen City Cabinetry. So that will be tonight uh, from 8 to 11 p.m. And this week, the subject is uh, we're doing another one of these contests. Paul's going to play, I think he said 21 songs. He has 21 songs. And uh, listeners can guess uh, or or figure out uh, what all of these songs have in common. What is the common denominator among the 21 songs that will be played this evening? And I don't know what the prize is or if there is a prize I don't know if you win an actual prize or if you just win the admiration of uh, all of your peers and all of us here on the show. And uh, I, and that's worth its weight in gold anyway, isn't it? So there you go. I don't remember what Paul said about a prize. Maybe there is no prize. That doesn't matter. It's still going to be a whole lot of fun, I dare say. So uh, we have a busy Friday, as we do every Friday here at WMNH 95.3. And uh, like I said, it is my favorite day here. I love it. I don't even have to leave the building, you know? Uh, it's great. I always have my computer with me, so I can always get work done between shows. 
uh, or during shows even. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jay, uh, Jay is still in the chat room. He says, uh, thanks so much for playing. Absolutely, Jay. Absolutely. My pleasure. Oh, uh, Paul E.C. is in the chat room and says, the prize is a 78 Chevy Monza. I have to tell you, I was not expecting a 78 Chevy Monza. That is exciting. I'm trying to picture what a Monza looks like. I feel like I've heard of it, but if you just said to me Monza, uh, I would probably assume it was some sort of food item. Uh, but yes, uh, by putting Chevy in front of it, it reminds me it was, in fact, a vehicle that you could drive. Um, that's uh, Is it an actual uh, full-size uh, 78 Chevy Monza, Paul, or is it a replica? What is it? Uh, does it run? I'm going to guess and say no. Uh, Melanie says, uh, <laughs> wow, that's a little dark. Uh, Melanie La Liberty in the chat room says, is the theme hints to where Paul hid the body? No. Well, actually, Melanie, I think you already figured it out because I have an intuition that Paul hid the body in the trunk of the 78 Chevy Monza. See? And he thought he was going to get away with it. And he thought, it would always be too obvious that we wouldn't figure it out. But I believe uh, that is where he hid the body. Oh, he said it's a photo of one. A photo of the body or a photo of the car? And is it an actual photo, like a, a physical uh, Polaroid, or is it a, a, a picture online? So many unanswered questions. I must tell you, I am particularly, particularly intrigued going into tonight's Retro Spectrum Radio. My goodness. Well, if you'd like to join me, uh, on the program today, the studio line is open, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. Uh, you can email me, matt at mattconnerton.com, or just message me directly through the website. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. We'll say hello to everyone in there in just a moment. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. And don't put it off. Get in during the first hour because, like I said, we do have a musical guest in the second hour. And the phone line will be open while our musical guests are here, too, if you have anything uh, for them. Uh, but uh, if you have anything not pertaining our musical guest uh, today, not pertaining to our musical guest, I should say, you'll want to get in during the first hour. 603-250-6007. Let's say hello to everybody in the chat room before we get rolling with some stuff. Melanie Law Liberty, I did mention, is in the chat. Uh, also, Jenny says, Shalom, peeps. Uh, Jason Fetterson, also known as JFed, says, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sign of spring. I feel like I'm going to sneeze, but I'm going to try really hard not to. Because as a uh, broadcaster, that's not something you want to be doing on the air. If uh, you can help it, and I usually can help it, but I got to tell you, I've got one on deck. Uh, I'm not sick. It's a sign of spring every, you know, when the we have the change of seasons, which I do love because I'm not a big winter guy. Uh, I love this uh, beautiful weather, but uh, there is a cost uh, to my sinuses that does, in fact, come with the change of seasons. Uh, Rocky Huber uh, joins us in the chat and says, Hi, is this a radio show that talks about scandals and various other drama, including, but not limited to, Bruce and the Easy G, uh, Easy G and Egg on His Face, Easy G and the infamous Creamland Pooper? Uh, yes, yes, Rocky, uh, that is the show that, uh, this is the show that talks about all of that and more. Uh, J Fed says Friday is awesome and rad. Yes. Uh, J Bello from uh, Ch uh, Chasing the Devil, I did mention, is in the chat. Uh, also, Scott Robinson says, I feel like I haven't heard an entertainment report in about three weeks. Scott, were you listening yesterday? Easy G called, and he did an entertainment report yesterday, and it was stellar. It was uh, lots of breaking news, although I was the one supplying the breaking news. It was all coming out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Very busy day there uh, yesterday. Scott says, good afternoon, my fellow Connor tonight's. Yes, Jenny says, ooh, you missed this re uh, this week's report. Oh, uh, let's see. JFED has a guess already regarding uh, tonight's show, the theme. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Gonzo is in the chat and says, hi, Matt. Hello, sir. Uh, and uh, Scott Robinson says, shoot, I missed it. That's all right, Scott. Here's the good news. All of the shows are archived at WMNHradio.org. And, of course, at my website, mattconnerton.com. 
And uh, we put the video up as well as the audio on social media. You don't ever have to feel like you have missed out, sir. You don't ever have to feel like you've missed out. You can always go back and relive. I mean, it's better to listen to it live because that way it's, you know, it's unpredictable. You just don't know what's going to happen. It's very, very exciting. Uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. By the way, a uh, quick uh, side note uh, before we, uh, I do have something I want to get to uh, regarding this whole TikTok thing you might have heard about, the whole TikTok thing. Um, I was, and Jenny doesn't even know about this, uh, and and because uh, Jenny is about to hear for uh, about this for the first time, along with the rest of you, let me preface this by saying everything's fine, I'm fine, no one's hurt, and no property is damaged. Having said all that, on my way here today, there was an accident. Yes, I was rear-ended on my way here. And by the way, save the jokes. That's for the other show, Matt Connerton Unsheathed. How dare you? Mine's out of the gutter, please. Uh, We like to uh, keep this in good taste, even on a Friday. No, but I was rear-ended on my way here today. Uh, I was on an incline, and apparently the driver behind me uh, didn't, uh, didn't hit the brakes, uh, quite quick enough and, uh, and did, uh, rear end me. Uh, but I, uh, fortunately it was, uh, it was just kind of a bump and, uh, no, it's fine, Jenny. It's fine. <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> Jenny reacted very, uh, 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 profanely in the chat room. No, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. Honestly, it was, it was a light enough bump that, uh, I wasn't even, you know, I, Put the car in neutral. I put the hazards on. I get it. I wasn't even angry getting out of the car. Uh, I, I was just like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go look. Um, so I got out of the car. No damage. Um, we learned uh, recently from when I hit that deer uh, in Goffstown uh, that uh, the the, uh, the vehicle that I drive uh, seems to uh, be quite resistant uh, to uh, impact. <laughs> So it's uh which is good. It's a good safe vehicle. No no damage to my car nor the other driver's car. Uh yeah, this guy, he was uh driving a Jeep. He uh he hit me and uh I I got out and he got out and um he was very uh, I give him credit. Uh he was very apologetic right off the bat and took responsibility. He's like, "Oh man, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry." Um and and really nice guy. Young guy, probably uh, couldn't have been older than uh mid 20s, but uh no, because I always tell you, don't admit fault. You know, insurance companies always say, you know, you you never admit, should never admit fault, uh, and whatnot as you're exchanging information and so forth. But uh, no, but I, like I said, even getting out of the car, I was like, I doubt I'm going to see any damage, but I got to go look, and I went and looked, and pff, nothing, uh, not even a scratch, and no damage to his car either. So, uh, I was like, you know, like I said, he was, he was really cool. He was very apologetic, which I appreciated him taking responsibility because like I said, they tell you not to do that, but he did it. And he, he was, uh, he was very sorry. And I said, uh, no worries, man. There's no damage. I even fist bumped him. I said, it's all good, man. So there you go. I figure it this way, uh, paying it forward in a sense, because a long, long time ago, uh, I rear ended somebody. And, uh, there was no, this happened on, uh, uh, boy, when was this? This must've been 15 years ago uh, at least, but it happened on Loudon road in Concord, similar situation. I bumped somebody, we get out of the vehicles, no damage to either car. The other guy was really nice and, uh, and was like, there's no damage. There's not even a scratch. Don't worry about it. Just, uh, just wake up. No, he, he didn't even say that. He just said, uh, it's all right. No, no problem. And, and, uh, all good. So, uh, so there you go. So I was paying it forward to someone else. I, I said, it's all fine. Uh, let's see. Melanie says, uh, you seem to get in accidents lately. Maybe it is you. Maybe. Now the thing is, Melanie, in neither of these accidents, in the case of what happened today and what happened a couple of years ago with that deer in neither of these cases, was it my fault? Or was it? Have I somehow attracted negative energy? Have I somehow? Is it a karmic thing? Is 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 for? Am I being punished by the universe for some reason? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I I mean, I'm a nice person. I don't. uh, I don't. uh, I mean, 
uh, I'm trying to think of something really bad that I might have done recently, but the truth about me is, and if you run a background uh, check on me, you'll find this. I'm so clean. I'm actually boring. I'm very vanilla. I live a very, a very uh, uh, straight and narrow uh, kind of life. Uh, I, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but then again, maybe I've attracted positive energy because in both instances, there was really no damage. Like I said, what happened today, there was no damage to my car. And what happened with the deer, there was damage, but then the damage disappeared. The, the bumper just kind of popped back into place, which still blows my mind that that happens. But, you know, changes in temperature and whatnot. But that was that was crazy. Uh, JFed says, what happens if you wake up tomorrow with your neck hurting? Uh, that's a good point, JFed. I should have uh, I should have gotten his information. Oh, man. That would have been a shame, wouldn't it, if I woke up tomorrow and realized I had whiplash? No, no, no. He it, he didn't hit me that hard. Like I said, it was a bump. It was it was. <laughs> I'll put it this way: there was a part of me that was tempted to not even get out of the car and just ignore it. That's how certain I was that everything was fine. No, but I, I wouldn't actually do that. No, I did. I did get out of the car, and uh, but uh, I mean, granted, he diffused it. He could have tricked me. Maybe there is damage and I didn't see it. He might have done a Jedi mind trick on me. He was very charming. And he disarmed me immediately by taking responsibility. See, that's the thing. Uh, even if somebody wrongs me in some way, if they immediately take responsibility for it and apologize, uh, I'm a very forgiving person. Uh, I'm not one to hold a grudge. So, uh, you know, I probably would have felt a little differently about what happened if I'd gotten out and... He didn't take responsibility, even though they always tell you, don't take responsibility. The insurance companies always tell you that. But maybe he felt pretty confident that I, you know, there was no damage, so I wasn't going to bother to, because I could have pushed the issue, I guess, right? I could have called the police and said, hey, somebody rear-ended me, but I wasn't going to do that in this case. So there you go. That's my story. Um... Melanie says, hear that, uh, Jenny? He was seconds from ignoring potential damage to the car. No, no, no. I didn't say I was seconds. I said there was, a, there was a small part of me that was tempted, but I wasn't actually seconds away. I did not. Uh, but my, my first impulse was, in fact, to put the car in neutral and, uh, or park and not neutral. It would have rolled away. What am I saying? <laughs> I was on a hill. I put the car in park, rather. Maybe, I, maybe there was damage. Uh, did I hit my head and I just don't remember? Uh, no, I I said that earlier, too. I said, put it in neutral. No, that would have been that, that actually would have been very bad. Um, no, I put the car in park and I put the hazards on and I got out. And uh, that was my first instinct. There's a tiny part of me that was like, oh, is this even going to be worth bothering with? Probably not. Hopefully not. That'll be a good thing. Let me make sure. So there you go. JFed says he was probably like WTF. This guy is getting out of his car. I didn't even barely hit him. He might have thought that. No, but he was a very nice guy, very charming. Um, but I do remember as I was looking at the bumper, uh, he, he said, so like he did some weird thing with his hand and he said, you know, this isn't the bumper you're looking for or something. I don't know. It was, it, that, that part was weird. Uh, anyway, no, but that's my, uh, that's my story. More of an anecdote, really, I suppose. I am picky about those things. I should hold myself to that same standard. Uh, 603-250-6007 is the number if you would like to join us today. 603-250-6007. Um, I did want to look at, quickly, it's not a big uh, article here, but you know we've been talking a lot this week about TikTok. You all might have heard of this, uh, this app. The young people are very into uh, the TikTok. Um. But uh, there were hearings, and uh, there, were, there was a hearing uh, yesterday. Um, Time Magazine has an article up, because I was discussing yesterday on the program, and you know, if, if, if you didn't hear yesterday's show, or if you haven't heard me discuss this, my position... Uh, <laughs> Melanie says, of course he was nice to you. You let him uh, get away from having to pay for those smashed uh, taillights. No. Everything's fine. I promise. Um, now, maybe between shows, I'll go and make sure the taillights are okay. No, actually, where the taillights uh, sit on the car, uh, they were not impacted at all. 
Eric Street joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, I think this isn't the bumper you're looking for for a Jedi mind trick. These aren't the droids you're looking for waving the hand. Yes, Eric, uh, you've uh, effectively explained the uh, joke to everyone. Thank you. Nice to see you in the chat room. Melanie says the whole back is probably a mess. Anyway, okay, so uh, TikTok. Uh, my position is, uh, as far as banning it, uh, I am opposed uh, to banning TikTok unless you can convince me that it is, in fact, a threat to our national security. Uh, that's my position, and I have an article here from Time.com that uh, might somewhat address that position, but... Um, and what I said yesterday on the show is, just to kind of uh, circle back to that for a moment, I said, look, um, I'm open to hearing the argument, certainly. Uh, you know, I, I've not made up my mind on this firmly. Uh, when you mention, when you say those words to me, national security, that's something I care deeply about. So you say national security, you've got my attention. So if you have my attention and you really believe this is a threat to national security, Make the argument, right? Make the case that we need to ban this. But until you've done that, uh, I'm not going to just say, oh, okay. you know. And I'm not big on, uh, like I said yesterday, too, what I call someday, maybe arguments. You know, well, someday, maybe the Chinese will figure out a way to uh, use this against us, this data against us. I'm not saying there's not a threat. I'm just saying... Make the argument convince me, because until you've done that, I'm not going to go along with saying we should ban this, especially considering, again, there are larger questions here that I think people are just maybe not interested in grappling with or they're ignoring uh, questions about, uh, do you want the uh, federal government controlling what apps you can and cannot use? And if you are okay with them telling you, that we have to ban a particular app, how much of an argument do, does the federal government have to present to you before you're, you'll be willing uh, to go along with it? Um, actually, let's look at this. This is from Wired.com, because I had completely forgotten about this. I remember hearing about this before, that there was also con uh, some concern about WeChat, which I've never used this is from Wired.com. If the U.S. bans TikTok, WeChat might be next. WeChat has 19 million users in the U.S. and is a lifeline for people across the Chinese uh, diaspora. Now, or diaspora. I think it's diaspora is the correct pronunciation. I'm not sure. I've heard it said both ways, but... Um, and obviously 19 million, that's a, a fraction of what uh, TikTok is, but... Um, but WeChat has come up before, and that's why this caught my eye. Let's look at this first, and then if we have time, we'll get to the Time uh, Magazine article, which might actually convince me that we should ban uh, TikTok. But uh, <laughs> Scott Robinson says in the chat, you pinko leftists don't care about national security. That's right. Uh, okay, Wired.com has this. Jimmy Zhu is a New Yorker. His mother in her 70s moved to the United States from China in 1982, a few years before he was born. Of all the messaging apps to choose from, there's only one his mother feels comfortable using. In fact, it's the only app she knows how to use. U.S.-owned messaging apps, including WhatsApp, which is very popular, and Signal, are banned in China. So for Zhu's mother, or, Z or maybe Zhao, or Zhao, uh, for, for Zhao's mother, WeChat, a social messaging app, and a social messaging and payments platform owned by Chinese tech giant Tencent has become a lifeline. The app has around 19 million daily active users in the U.S. Many of them, like Zhao's mother, depend on the app to stay connected to family overseas and uh, to the tight-knit Chinese communities in the States. Zhao, age 38, works in project management and mobile app development and says he's conflicted about using the app, which is heavily censored and monitored in China. WeChat users outside of China received notifications last year informing them that their personal data, including likes, comments, and search history, would be transmitted back to the People's Republic. Okay, so WeChat users were actually informed of that. And by the way, that goes to, just a, a quick uh, side street here, but that goes to... um. 
you know, personal data like likes and comments and search history, our personal data, I don't think of that as the same as our, our national security, right? So are we really, If it, in other words, I, I only mention that again because at, like our governor, Chris Sununu, made the argument recently, he's opposed to a TikTok ban because he says, well, if they have access to our use, you know, if they're compiling our user data on the app or, or out, even outside of the app, like on Google, so forth, um, which they might be, is that a threat to national security or is that just, you know, their, our, our privacy? We give away, we do give away some of our privacy when we use these apps and most people know that. Um, he didn't seem to buy into the national security argument and he said if it's a matter of protecting our personal data then that should be up to individuals and individuals should have that right whether or not to participate in this app. So, but apparently WeChat went ahead and told. They informed users outside of China that this data was being sent back. So I like that transparency. That's good. Uh, it says here, but Zhao says he's willing to make the trade-off between privacy and staying connected to his parents. He says, quote, for my generation, it's easy enough st- easy enough for us to move on to another app there's a million different apps but for those that are not tech savvy it will be difficult for them to move to another application unquote over the past few months the u.s government has been ramping up pressure on chinese owned technology companies and in particular tiktok the social media platform owned by beijing headquartered ByteDance. earlier this month u.s president joe biden told tiktok that it faces a total ban If it doesn't sever ties with China, Uh, TikTok's uh, CEO Chu is due to testify in Congress. Okay, so this was actually this went up yesterday before the uh, before his testimony uh, because it talks about him being uh, 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 about to testify before Congress. Three proposed pieces of legislation: the Data Act, the Restrict Act, and the Anti-Social CCP Act. All take aim at foreign com- uh, foreign companies that process Americans' data. TikTok, which has 150 million active users in the U.S., has routinely been named the primary target. But TikTok is not the only Chinese company with a huge user base in the U.S. There's Shein, or Shine, I'm not sure how you say it, S-H-E-I-N, the fast fashion brand, Timu, the online marketplace, and CupCut, the video editing app also owned by ByteDance. And then there's WeChat, a company that has openly said it sends user data back to China and one that the U.S. has already tried to ban in the past. See, that's what I found particularly interesting about this. I didn't realize this until recently, that the U.S. actually had previously tried to ban WeChat, and apparently it didn't work. Uh, If TikTok does get banned or restricted, WeChat and other Chinese apps could be in line next. Um, we ch- I'm going to skip down because the article is long and I, I, I do want to try to get to the other uh, article from time.com if we have time. Uh, WeChat is often referred to as a messaging app, but it's far more than that. It integrates social media and e-commerce features, creating a platform where it's relatively easy to build businesses and communities. People in Asian uh, diasporas or diasporas... <laughs> Uh, and those who live and work in Asian communities in the U.S. use the app to make connections, talk to relatives back home, read news updates, share uh, uh, share uh, uh, money and, and post updates uh, in their friend feed. Um, again, skipping down. Uh, in Chinatown, Las Vegas, WeChat remains one of the quickest ways to share news and crime alerts. When a waiter in Shanghai tastes a... A Shanghainese style restaurant was shot 11 times during an attempted burglary in 2021. Hundreds of community members in Vegas closely followed the story via local WeChat groups. Um, in again, I'm skipping down in 2020, former uh, President Donald Trump tried banning WeChat along with TikTok. See, I didn't realize that. I remember when the Trump administration tried to ban TikTok and they didn't get very far, just as the Biden administration hasn't gotten very far so far because it's not that simple or forcing the company to sell 
to an American company is not that simple. So, uh, but uh, it says here in 2020, uh, Trump tried banning WeChat along with TikTok on the grounds of national security. After he announced the plan, WeChat downloads surged. Apparently, people wanted to hurry up and get the app before it was banned. Because how do you? Because here's the thing: if you've already downloaded it and they ban it, what happens? Um, does Apple or Google Play or wherever you get the app in question? I think uh, uh, TikTok is on. Uh, you have to go to Apple for it. I think right. Um, are they then, well, first of all, are they legally bound to comply and remove the app from the app store? And then if they do, well, what about all the people who already have it and who've, who've been using it? Do are, are they able to just continue using it? Is there some way, is there actually a way to even forget legally? Is there even a way technologically to prevent Americans who already have these apps on their devices to prevent Americans from continuing to use these apps that are already active on their phones? This is something I've wondered about, too. You know, just the the, the the practicality of it and whether or not it's even feasible to do this. Okay, so WeChat downloads surged. And by the way, I'm, I'm, I, I assume uh, TikTok, TikTok downloads are surging as well right now. Uh, President Joe Biden revoked Trump's executive or Oh, oh I'm sorry. Let me back up. So a judge blocked the move, and upon coming into office, President Joe Biden revoked Trump's executive orders, adding that further evaluation was needed. Biden has since revived his predecessor's arguments in targeting TikTok, but not WeChat. U.S. concerns over TikTok are based on concerns over privacy and a perception that it could be used to manipulate public sentiment. In other words, so for example... Chinese propaganda, people posting Chinese propaganda videos on uh, uh, on uh, on uh, TikTok. Um, I, I mean, could you could you make a law leaving TikTok alone, except for uh, we're going to ban it if you don't prevent Chinese propaganda? I'm I'm not again. I don't I don't know how I don't know how that would work, but um, TikTok has been found. To be able to track a user's keystrokes and taps, their IP location, biometric information, search history, message content, what they're watching, and for how long. Leaked audio from meetings at the company that were obtained by BuzzFeed News revealed that, quote, everything is seen in China, unquote, including data from U.S. users. Several employees at ByteDance were fired in 2022 for misusing user data to spy on journalists in the U.S., something the Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation are still investigating. And that did come up during the hearings. Of course it did. And that is, that is a legitimate concern. Okay, so when we get into that, again, like I say, I will not support a ban unless you can convince me, unless you make the argument. You would probably want to include in your argument that bit of information if you were to attempt to convince me that we should ban this. Okay, getting back to this. Again, this is from Wired.com. The platform also appears to be vulnerable to censorship and algorithmic uh, manipulation. This month, a company executive openly said they had overridden the app's algorithm to push content on TikTok, and the platform has been reported to suppress content from users with Down syndrome, autism, and other disabilities, as well as users deemed, quote, poor or ugly, unquote. The app's moderators have also censored videos on Tiananmen Square and Tibetan independence, which means users in the U.S. are presented with China's version of the story. And again, that did come up uh, during the uh, the hearings yesterday. Uh, it's these aspects that raise red flags for disinformation and cybersecurity experts. Um, skipping down again. Um, whether the government's concerns over censorship are enough to justify banning the service or whether average users face an immediate risk isn't clear. So again, if you're going to convince me, you got to make it a little more clear. Uh, Analysts point out that there are also double standards at play in the debate around data protection. Uh, 
One analyst said, quote, everybody does it, not just TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Google, you name it. If you're not paying for an amazing service and you are part of the product and being part of the product means that your information is being taken and monetized, unquote. Now, if that's the, again, if that's the problem, if it's not, if, if, if the, uh, the main problem is not necessarily national security, but user privacy, again, in the year 2023, does anyone use any of these apps and have what I think legally would be termed a reasonable expectation for privacy? I don't. Not that I'm that worried about it anyway. I mean, obviously, I'm not, you know. I'm not someone who wants to remain uh, relatively uh, quiet and anonymous in the world, or I wouldn't be doing a radio show. So, you know, I'm living out in the open. But uh, everyone has to kind of decide for themselves how much information and how much of themselves they want to put out into the world. But but I, I do think if you are someone who is actively using any of these apps and you're operating on, under some assumption or delusion that you still have a high degree of privacy... Just because maybe you don't, you know, just because maybe you don't put, post pictures of what you had for lunch, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, somebody isn't going to uh, figure out, I don't mean other people on the app, but the people who can somehow monetize what it is that you are posting or information about you or what you're looking at, your search data, etc. You know, does that bother you? I'm personally not bothered by it. I'm in the non unbothered category, <laughs> right? but you know, if, if you can, if, if somehow my search results are, if that information is valuable to you have at it, Haas. But, uh, again, it's uh, to me, it's, it's all about national security. If there is an argument here, I'm not worried about privacy. You, you you are naive if you think you have privacy while using these apps. I'm worried about national security. Convince me. I guess what I'm saying is you're not going to convince me on the privacy argument. You're just not. I accepted long ago. There is no privacy. Fine. There is no privacy. National security is another issue. Convince me there. Because if I feel that way, I guarantee you millions of other Americans feel that way. Privacy? What privacy? You know, especially if you're someone who's, you know, taking 15 selfies a day and putting them online and you seem to want everyone to know where you're going and what you're doing every minute of the day. Uh, you know, that kind of individual is clearly uh, not concerned about privacy. And there's millions of people who, who do that. I use social media more for business purposes, not so much personal, but I do occasionally post personal things. Obviously, I'm not that concerned about privacy if I am. Um, this is the end of the Wired article. It says the reason that TikTok of all the Chinese owned apps has faced such intense pressure is mainly because of its scale and reach. Quote, there's a huge difference between TikTok and those others, even though they're in the top 20. TikTok is the Leviathan, unquote. Oh, I was wrong. There is more to this article. All right, let's look at this. But analysts say if a ban on TikTok does go ahead, there's a strong chance that WeChat could be next. Okay. Let's leave that aside. I want to look at, before we run out of time, because it's already, wow, it's already close to the top of the hour. Um, Time Magazine, time.com, has this story up. Uh, what to know about the TikTok security concerns. It says here, TikTok CEO Shozi Chu uh, faced an extensive grilling from the U.S. lawmakers at a congressional hearing yesterday amid a new wave of concerns about the app's ties to China and the security of U.S. citizens' data. The House and Energy Commerce Committee hearing came after the Biden administration indicated that, okay, we know all that. I'm going to skip down here. Okay. The controversy over TikTok is driving yet another wedge between the U.S. and China. Beijing said yesterday it would oppose any effort by Washington to force a sale of the app, suggesting that such a move could lead Chinese investors to restrict their investments from the U.S. economy. Ever since before the Trump administration first threatened to ban TikTok in 2020, the company has denied accusations that it has close ties to the Chinese Communist Party and that U.S. citizens' data are at risk. It says it has since invested $1.5 billion in a project to ensure sensitive user data is kept on U.S. soil. And by the way, that's the, the Texas project, I think it's called. That's what we kept hearing about during the hearing yesterday. 
uh, cannot be accessed from Beijing and is subject to U.S. government audits. Um, Chu said in uh, written testimony ahead of the hearing, quote, TikTok has never shared or received a request to share user U.S. user data with the Chinese government, nor would TikTok honor such a request if one were ever made, unquote. By the way, I think part of the, the sticking point is, if I'm not mistaken, there is a law uh, in China that if the U.S. government comes not, I'm sorry, if the Chinese government comes knocking and says, we want this, you have to give it over. It's not like in the United States where, you know, the government comes knocking and you say, well, do you have a subpoena? Do you have a warrant? Uh, do you have, because uh, 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 I'm not going to comply and we can go to court over it and fight it out. But because that that's happened with uh, U.S. companies where the government has come knocking and not everyone wants to open the door. Okay. Uh, again, this is from Time. His efforts have done little to dispel concerns in Washington. Uh, while the congressional hearing on Thursday was reminiscent of earlier grillings on the uh, Hill of Tech CEOs, with lawmakers often using props, large printouts of TikTok videos displayed on a big screen to make their points, the unity of condemnation coming from both sides of the political aisle was remarkable. Kathy Rogers said, quote, We do not trust TikTok will ever embrace American values. TikTok has repeatedly chosen the path of uh, for more control, more surveillance, and more manipulation, your platform should be banned, unquote. So what is TikTok accused of? The Biden administration and the U.S. intelligence community are reportedly concerned about Americans' data falling into Chinese hands because of the belief that this data could help China conduct influence operations aimed at the American public. TikTok's demonstrable ability to amplify content directly to millions of users, including many children and teens, appears to have American officials worried that the Chinese state could compel TikTok to covertly influence the U.S. public. Um, uh, we, uh, we could examine uh, something analogous to that might be Russian, you know, what they call Russian inter interference in our elections when Russian propaganda is uh, spread about social media, uh, as was done in the 2016 election. Although I myself is all have always been skeptical, not that the Russians did that. I absolutely believe the Russians did that. Uh, I, but I, I know that uh, Trump uh, in Helsinki standing next to Putin said, oh, no, I believe Putin. Uh, but uh, I do believe the Russians did that. However, I will say I've always been skeptical about how much of an actual effect that it caused. Uh, anyway, it says here in 2019, The Guardian reported that TikTok had instructed its moderators to censor videos mentioning topics seen as controversial by the CCP, including the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre and Tibetan independence. TikTok has said those guidelines are no longer in use. And in late 2022, videos of anti-government protests in China spread widely on the app. Uh, U.S. Deputy, uh, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco told the Wall Street Journal last month, quote, Our intelligence community has been very clear about China's efforts and intention to mold the use of this technology using data in a worldview that is completely inconsistent with our own, unquote. The director of the National Security Agency, uh, Paul uh, N Nakis, Nakis one? I'm not sure how to say that. Uh, said earlier this month he was concerned about TikTok's ability to influence the U.S. cultural conversation. He told the Senate Armed Services Committee, quote, it's, only, it's not only the fact that you can influence something, but you can also turn off the message as well when you have such a large population of listeners, unquote. These fears uh, have not only been stoked by politicians and the national security community, but also TikTok's competitor Meta, which has sought to portray the platform as a danger to American children deserving of a ban, the Washington Post reported. Meta first launched Instagram Reels, a clone of TikTok in 2020, when it appeared uh, the Trump administration may have been on the brink of banning the app, which was very smart of Meta. And of course, if you're on Facebook, you'll see Reels on Facebook as well. And YouTube has their own version, shorts, uh, also uh, just uh, short videos. So YouTube, it looks like YouTube also wanted to kind of get ahead of, you know, if there is a, a TikTok ban, because if you don't know, if you're not on TikTok, if you've never used it, if you're 
uh, completely unaware. It's it's just short videos. I don't remember what the limit is on TikTok for the length of uh, of the videos, but um, so uh, both YouTube and uh, Facebook and Instagram, which are both you know Meta, uh, they they have tried to uh, get into that space and kind of get ahead of this. Um, okay, here's the important part here. Do the security concerns about TikTok hold water? It's impossible to say with certainty because they are predictions about the future, but as well as there, as there being little evidence, publicly available at least, that TikTok has engaged in a narrative control on behalf of the CCP, uh, Chinese Communist Party, uh, there is also no evidence that TikTok has a clandestine connection to the Chinese state. Um, Chris Stokel Walker uh, wrote in BuzzFeed News this week, quote, I've been trying for years to find any links to the Chinese state. I've spoken to scores of TikTok employees, past and present, in pursuit of such a connection, but I haven't discovered it. I can't say that link doesn't exist, but none of us has found the smoking gun, unquote. And again, you know, that's... um. That that goes to my skepticism. You know, I, I like I like I always say, I don't like the someday maybe arguments about what what could happen. You know, I, I, I need something a little more concrete than that to convince me that we should ban something. Um still TikTok has a long list of very real privacy scandals under its belt. So this would be an argument to the other side of what I was saying. In December 2022, the company admitted that employees had spied on reporters using location data in an attempt to track down the source of leaked information. I, I have to tell you, that is deeply troubling to me. That is deeply troubling to me. So that's that's a big strike against TikTok. Uh, those employees were fired, TikTok's parent company ByteDance said. TikTok also uh, reportedly planned to surveil the locations of specific U.S. citizens using Location data from their devices, Forbes reported uh, last October. Uh, TikTok also engages in what some observers have called invasive uh, tracking measures against ordinary users. Um, These tactics include prompting users uh, to let TikTok harvest... uh, Harvest uh, their phone contacts list as a way of connecting users who already know each other on the app. Even if you refuse uh, to give TikTok access to your contacts, it will still prompt you to follow people who have your number in their phone contacts list. Other apps do that too, by the way. Um, But these growth hacking measures are hardly any worse than what other homegrown social media companies like Meta do. And the, uh, the systemic issue behind those more benign privacy violations isn't TikTok's responsibility with China. It's the fact that the U.S. has no comprehensive privacy legislation, true, allowing social media apps to operate in an effective Wild West when it comes to collecting and monetizing user data. Eva Galperin, the director of cybersecurity at Electronic Frontier Foundation, wrote on Twitter, quote, If you think the U.S. needs a TikTok ban and not a comprehensive privacy law requiring, uh, I'm sorry, regulating data brokers, you don't care about privacy. You just hate that a Chinese company has built a dominant social media platform, unquote. Um, Julia Angwin, we're almost at the end and then we're going to go to break and then we've got uh, the band is uh, in the building, so we're going to bring them in. Julia Angwin, the founder of investigative tech news site The Markup, wrote in a New York Times opinion piece, quote, While Congress has been up in arms about TikTok, it has failed to pass even the most basic comprehensive privacy legislation to protect our data from being misused by all the tech companies that collect and mine it. When you dig into the national security allegations against TikTok, it is telling that most of the charges could just as easily be levied against the U.S. tech giants. Very interesting. By the way, hello to uh, Miriam Banish in the Facebook live chat who says, Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday to you, Miriam. All right, we are going to take a break. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a song. I think I'm going to play something from uh, Dust Prophet. Uh, This track, Bury Me Before Noon, which is the title track from their latest release. We'll give this a listen. We're going to show some love to our amazing sponsors. And then when we come back in hour number two, the band will be here pretty late. 
will be with us live in studio and they're going to play for us. Really looking forward to that. Oh, hello to Rhonda Ostrowitz Favero, by the way, in the Facebook live chat. Haven't seen Rhonda in there for a long time. So don't go away. There is plenty more to come today on the program. Here is uh, some Dust Prophet. Bury me before noon. And uh, after the break, we'll have Pretty Late live in studio. Don't go away.
Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry. Located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Plimento, Plimento Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Plimento, Plimento Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Plimento's Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. Welcome back, everybody. We are well in hour number two, Numero Dose of Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, Today is Friday, March 24, 2023, and uh, live in studio with us, uh, the band is here. We've got uh, Pretty Late joining us and i'm going to uh start with you sir over at the news desk and we'll go around and if you could each uh, introduce yourselves and tell us what you do in the band okay so my name is mike uh i am one of the guitar players and singers and pretty late um, oh okay i started the band uh, quite a while ago my fiance is taking over most of the singing now ah <laughs> uh rob not here was the second member the founding member of the start as a, as a duo and turned into five of us now the oh. rest of them are in front of you, right across the desk. Very good, very good. And you, sir? Hey, everybody. My name's Tom. Uh, I play bass in the band. I'm probably the most recent member to join. It's um, been about like three and a half years or so now, and uh, that's all. Oh, okay. And uh, you? Hey, everybody. I'm Christine. Um, I am the lead vocalist in the band. I dabble with the keys. Um and I recently joined the band uh, a few years ago, and um, yeah, that's me. All right, and you, sir? 
Yes, I'm Mike Mike, the drummer of Pretty Late. I'm one of the founding fathers, as Mike mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, we rewrite, compose, dabble around on different instruments, you know. But just to keep the sound as smooth and as grooving as it possibly can. Tell me you do some backing vocals with that voice of yours. I definitely do as well. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, thank you all uh, for being here. This is great. And uh, I think what we'll do is uh, let's open with a, a song here, and then we'll come back and, and we'll talk about it. And um, uh, I, I heard, uh, is, is Deceiver, is that uh, a good one to start with? Yeah. Yeah, that's Jenny's one of Jenny's favorite stuff. Yeah. It actually uh, shows a uh, a lot of our harmonies and cool. backup vocals, as you were just mentioning. Okay, okay, excellent. So we'll uh, we'll open with this, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and talk about it. So check it out. This is Deceiver from Pretty Late here on Matt Connerton Unleashed. Oh, by the way, is this the first time this has been played on FM radio? I think so. This is a world radio premiere. <laughs> we like the world radio premieres around here. All right, here it is. This is Deceiver. Very cool. <laughs>
<laughs> that is awesome. I love it. That is Deceiver from Pretty Late, and they are here with us in studio. We have Mike, Tom, Christine, and Mike here with us, and we're missing... Uh, who are we missing? Rob Sacchetti. Rob, Rob, yes. Yes. Um, but, uh, no, it is wonderful to uh, wonderful to have you here. What a great sound, and you're getting a lot of love in the uh, Facebook live chat, too. Cool. Uh, uh, J-Fed says, I dig this song, and Jenny says, love this, and... Uh, yeah, you're getting a you're getting a lot of love in there. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And thanks, we, guys. yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And and we have a, a Mike. You were saying so we have a mutual acquaintance, uh, Ash Bottoms. Yes, yes. Uh, we um we worked with her in uh, WBR. They uh, let her go for whatever reason they decided to. Yeah. But um yeah, we ended up doing that petition for got you know over hundred something signatures and. Uh, Wish her the best, and I know she's going to be starting her own project soon. So, yes, I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, now, what the uh, songs that we're uh, hearing today, and we're gonna we're gonna play something else in a couple minutes. But are these from uh, an album that you're yep. working on, or uh, that you have out? Yeah, or? so it's better late than never. You can check it out on Spotify, all the major platforms, um, all the retailers. They, um, you know, the songs from the past and about memories and things like that, and uh, kind of they turn into a collective experience from the five of us. Okay, very good, very good. And uh, do you um, do you all write together, or, or what's uh, the, the writing process so, like? So, um, me and Rob did a lot of the writing at first, and um, you know, as each one of them kind of came in, they added their own little twist and their own personality mm -hmm. and their own soul mm -hmm. into the songs. And so, the, my personal experiences became our personal experiences. Yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, we kind of got closer, and. It, you know, found closure in our own past and demons through an example of uh, <laughs> just uh, pure writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a pretty interesting and cool dynamic. Like a lot of this this first album, close to maybe like around half or or more of the songs were written before this full band became the iteration that it is now, mm -hmm. and then added some parts in, recorded it. It's cool. So this album is kind of a mix of like past and, and present kind of. And then going into the future, the styles just kind of evolve even more. Uh, it's it's going to be pretty cool. And um, can can you tell me about recording? Because uh, it sounds uh, really good. And, um, you know, we live in an era where, of course, there's many different ways that you can record now. And I've had I've had several, because uh, I ask everybody this question. I'm, I'm kind of a, a recording nerd myself. Um <laughs> Uh, the last several uh, artists that I've had on the show that I've I've asked this about, it, it, they give me answers about like recording at home and sending tracks back and forth, and and I feel like that method of doing it became really big during the pandemic. And of course, yeah, you know, I I still know artists who will go and and spend money at a million dollar studio, and you know th that's still an option. But um, but how? Uh, like that, that song Deceiver, it sounds yeah. like it was done in a million dollar studio, so, but <laughs> but but I don't know that it was necessarily. No, um, so <laughs> actually, Eric Alper from Ugly Duck Studios that was in the Sound Museum in Brighton, you know, after that closure, they just moved, they got a new location. Yeah. Shout out to Eric and uh, Ugly Duck, they're awesome. Uh, yeah. So what happened was in the, during the pandemic, we were at a t shirt shop, we were practicing in the back, and you know, a pandemic hit, and our we didn't have anywhere, anywhere to go. So yeah. we were practicing in my living room, keeping the neighbors up, and uh, <laughs> decided to, like, all right, well, we might as well take the money that we were paying, you know, unnamed T-shirt guy to <laughs> um, put it in the studio. So we, you know, we shopped around, and, you know, people were offering us weird deals. And then finally we found Eric, and he just kind of, you know, said, I, you know, dig the sound, and, you know, this is the deal, and, you know, we could start coming in there, and then, you know, we kind of waited for all the rules and, mm. you know, COVID diagnoses and kind of mm. wore the masks, and there's photos uh, up on our Instagram, actually, Pretty Late MA, where you can see all the, the process, where we were just all oh. messed up and social distancing and, you know, kind of winging it. Right. It was, uh, yeah, it was definitely very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, going in and kind of having all those restrictions. Yeah, there's and... only four of us allowed in the room, yeah. and yeah. there's five of us. So yeah. one of us had to wait outside. <laughs> Always. And we had to alternate <laughs> as we went in the, in the studio. Uh, we have a call. I think uh, somebody on the line wants to talk to you. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hey, this is Ashley Bottoms. Oh. Hey, 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 hey Ashley. Hey, Ash. 
Hey, how are I you? I was listening to the show and I heard my name mentioned. I thought, what the hell? I'll give you guys a call. Yes, Very yes. Awesome. Yep, just talking here with uh, Pretty Late. <laughs> yeah, these guys, let me tell you something. These guys not only are a fantastic band, but off stage, they're like the greatest people in the world. They, these are the type of people that uh, really give a damn about you. And uh, they came, I think you had mentioned that they actually. Uh, started a petition when my show got axed off of uh, WR You Know Who. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. uh, you know, these guys really paid it forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did our best, and we love you, Ash. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Ashley. There's I mean, one honestly, thing. A lot of people probably wouldn't have done that, but I mean, mm. it's just the fact that these guys are a class act. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's fantastic. And, you know, I wish them nothing but success. And I don't want to hold you guys because I know you guys uh, are doing a show, with, but I just wanted to give you guys a call tell you guys even though i'm not doing the show i got things in the pipeline and uh yeah. i still support them i think they're a great band thanks ashley i, th- I think uh mike did you start to say something to, to that, ash that was me oh. over here oh sorry <laughs> so, okay Tom. so uh yeah i was just gonna say and, and for everyone listening who doesn't know ashley bottoms she's been a, a huge huge support in local music the local music scene around massachusetts um covering all different genres metal and rock Pop, you know, anything. She had a she had a show, and well she's been a, a huge decade. support for a lot of local musicians, and we all appreciated it, mm-hmm. and uh, wanted to kind of show that support when things, you know, took took a change. So, thanks, thanks for that. In case anybody didn't know who Ashley Bottoms was, she's she's yeah. pretty rad. I yeah, keep an eye out for her show. Lot to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, Ash. Well, thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. Absolutely, guys. Much success, and the new songs sound great. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Ash. Love you guys. All Love right. <laughs> All right. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Well, that was nice. That was a cool surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, we had uh, we had Ash on the show back when uh, shortly after everything uh, first went down, and, and we had a, a long conversation, told the whole story. Pretty pretty interesting. But um, yeah, she has done a lot, and and will do so in the future. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Uh, yeah, it was that was the, the goal to keep her spirits high. Mm-hmm. What she does for the scene is just is unmatched. Oh yeah. You know, and that she gives all the little guys shots that, you know, would never even have a chance to get on a show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's, um, we should play another song. Uh, so we've got, uh, uh, I'll, I'll let, uh, I'll let you all pick. We'll uh, go Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yeah, it's probably, we'll that's Wonder. our biggest hit. Right? Oh, really? It's our biggest hit. It's one of my faves. Uh, oh, okay. Easy. All right. Very good. So we'll give this a listen. So this is Wonder Woman from Pretty Late. Here is this a uh, now you said a hit so this has been played on the radio before? Uh, it's over thirty thousand streams on Spotify. So oh, but not on the radio. Not on so the this radio. Is a, so this another is a, worldwide premiere. This is a world radio you get, premiere. <laughs> you'll get three of them. Man. Nice, them. <laughs> nice. I love it. All right, here it is. This is Wonder Woman from Pretty Late. Oh, why don't I? Oh, sorry, that's my fault. User error. Let me try that again. Here we go.
Oh, that that's nice. That is uh, Wonder Woman from Pretty Late, who are here with us in studio. Very cool. Very cool. I love the sound. So uh, that, that's really good. And um, we do have a third song, which we'll we'll save uh, for the end of our discussion today. But um, Mike, you were just saying uh, off air that uh, Guardrail, uh, which we're going to play in a few minutes when we wrap up. Uh, you've got a video coming yeah, up for that? Yeah, we have a music video. It was directed by Hush Harding, um, the local rapper from Massachusetts. It was right down the street from me, but he, he's great at graphics and design. And, and I, me and him, co-directed the story behind the video and kind of used mm -hmm. the imagery from the music to kind of really get there. Yeah. So, um, it's you know, it's a really good song. People really love it when we play it live. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's really driving, you know, we really just came across it. And it was the last song that we wrote for the album. And it just uh, came together. It wasn't even going to make it on the album. We just decided, like, no, it has to be on there. Mm -hmm. it just had to be. Yeah. Is why, uh, what led to the decision to choose that for a video? Um, it's just the reaction from when we play it live. Yeah. Yeah. People just go nuts. They really yeah. do. When we play that song live. It's just. And it just like it just syncs up so easy, and the feeling we get from it playing it on stage, you can just see it. And I think yeah. that's why the crowd reacts so positively. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Rhonda uh, Favero in the chat room says, "Great song, really enjoyed it." Uh, referring to Wonder Woman, and uh, J Fed also says, "Great song." Um, we thank you guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really glad you like it. Absolutely. You know, make sure, make to sure follow you follow us. us yes, on all the major platforms. <laughs> we're gonna be yep. all around, and a lot of big things are coming. So. Yeah. yeah you were you were saying and, and i i hear this from from a lot of of musicians how how hard it can be in terms of keeping up with everything on social media no, because absolutely. there's a there's a lot to do are are you the one who who generally handles that or do you all um do, all. participate in that I, or? I mean i started doing most of it but tom has been a huge help to me yeah uh we've been sitting down having weekly meetings and just uh answering all the emails mm -hmm. and you know the messages that fans send us and as well as finding new opportunities and ways to really improve our brand and our sound and get out there to play shows like post COVID and try yeah. to figure out how to navigate the, uh, the windling indie rock world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a real adjustment. Like, especially these days, social media being what it is, it's, it's in the last five to 10 years, like the, the landscape of all that has changed quite a lot. And it's so business. There's mm -hmm. just a lot to it that didn't exist before. So it's really kind of, you know, it's kind of like I'm learning. I didn't know Mike's really the driving force behind that type of stuff in the band. I don't really do a lot of social media, but there's just kind of a lot to it, as you alluded to. You yeah. Know, just kind of a lot, lot to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not always like fun. A, a second job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To your full-time job. Yeah, no doubt. Week. But, but it, for but, the music, it's kind of, you know. That's just kinda, worth it. Yeah. And, and it's, if you want to be a working band and get out there, that's just kind of what you got to do, I guess. You know? Right, right. Yeah, it's a good problem to have in that sense, too. Exactly. That, you know, yeah. you, you have something that people are interested in mm -hmm. and, and want to participate in on social media. So that's good. Which, by the way, we think it's super cool that right now, by coming on the show, a whole new group of people is hearing our music that mm -hmm. probably likely would not have otherwise, which I'm grateful for. You know, I think that's yes. pr pretty rad. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Oh, of course. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to do it. Yeah. Um, do you play a lot of shows? Do, do you have? Oh uh, yeah, so we've been gigging around one, uh, one a month. Um, we in the April thirtieth, we'll be at O'Brien's Pub in uh, oh, Austin. Uh, nice. So you can come out there, check us out. Um, we're also going to be doing um, "Sing Us a, a Story." It's a foundation uh, that kind of uh, takes a story from a you know a less fortunate or ill child, and we um, create a song for them and uh, to let them yeah. help them be creative in a way. So really, yeah, interesting. Uh, really yeah, the opportunity to, wow. to participate yeah. in that really. Came. Mike, where did that opportunity come from? They, they, who found it? Yeah, they uh -huh. just reached out to us, and um, you know, they liked our music, and just kind of figured that you know we had the chops to create something really special for someone that is in a crappy situation. Oh wow, that's really cool. And and what's the organization that it's called? Sing us a story. Sing us a story. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Oh, that's really cool. I'd, I'd yeah. not heard of that before. Oh, yeah. I guess they've been on yeah. US Today and all the things like that. So. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we're just going to meet the engineer before the show and just uh, kind of, you know, find something special to do. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's and, like and the, the, if I'm not mistaken, right, the child 
that you're writing it for provides you with the words and yeah, the lyrics, it's, it's, right? It's, they provide us with the uh, words, and we make it into a song. They provide a okay. story, and we, yeah. we turn it into a song. Right, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. I've certainly never done that before. It's going to be new, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you, Mike, you had said something, too, about uh, that caught my ear about the, how did you put it, the dwindling indie rock scene? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, cur- I'm curious well, about that. Well, with if the you can closing ex- of the Sound Museum... You know, and a lot yeah. of just uh, bands have been, you know, upended and, you know, had to kind of fight for their survival. They have nowhere mm. to go. And, like, the yeah. practice spaces are just drying up out there in Boston. Yeah. And rent's rising. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of bands have 800 bucks with that they spend uh, for a practice room. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a lot of money. And, uh, fortunately, we're, we're in a good situation where we don't have to do that because we practice outside the city. But, yeah. you know, it, it's making it harder and harder to, you know, with all the venues closing as well, mm-hmm. you know, you see all these, you know, it was a couple of pro- not prominent, uh, you know, taverns and things like that, that did the really great, indie music is one. just closing. So yeah. It's, it's tough, but you know, things, hopefully we can kind of resurrect that spirit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- there were definitely some venues that unfortunately didn't survive the pandemic. Yeah. Which, uh, which, which was not a, not a surprise, but, but certainly unfortunate. Yeah. So, so you, you play about once a month. You, yeah. You're gigging out. Yeah. Gigging out once a month. It gives us plenty of time to practice and, uh, f- you know, find new material as well as learn, you know, some covers that pe- we think people might like or you know, find yeah. some relevancy and, uh, you know, the climate out there and what, what, put a good show on. Do Do you do any covers currently? Or are you? Are yeah, you we do a few. We do. Yeah. We do a couple. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, they're ever changing. Well, like what I'm always curious because I, I feel like a, a good way to kind of figure out um, to gauge what somebody's influences are musically or what, you know, what do you do for covers? Um, what do we, I mean, we, I would we, say, yeah, I ahead, mean, um, just off the top of my head, what I can think of that we've covered before would be um, uh, Amy Winehouse. Um, we've covered um, as it was by Harry Styles. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Some yeah, more we do that like, one. We do, we've, we've done a couple of the popular yeah. songs. We've done yeah. Will, Will Smith and just things to keep it fresh. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, we've, like I said, yeah, we've done Valerie. We do. We did t- Tennessee yeah, Whiskey was yeah. a big yeah. one. Chris Stapleton. Um, mm-hmm. done, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we, we, like we said, we don't really lot. put ourselves in a box genre wise. So, yeah. I like, think my you know, most favorite would be Redbone by yeah. Childish Gambino. I feel exactly. like um, oh wow, yeah. We kind of like to pull from all different areas of, yeah. of music, just yeah. because um, we're just open and are always listening and kind of pulling different aspects from different genres into our own music. So um, I feel like when we do come up with a cover uh, that we're choosing, it's just um, I feel like we intentionally like to pull from different areas. So yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, so good. It's because, I mean, me, Mike, and Christine, we grew up in a pretty diverse neighborhood down in Germantown. Um, if Mike, you want to tell them all about how, how uh, diverse it is in Quincy. I mean, we just, you know, you got people that grew up as poor as me and Mike, Mike, all the way up to, you know, million, tr- trillion dollar houses right, <laughs> and stuff right. like that. And uh, it's right outside of Boston. So, like, you know, you... you you, you listen to four or five different genres of music walking down the street. You know, yeah. Neighborhood. yeah. All in the same building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you guys grow up together? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Have, have you? How long have you played music together, the two of you? I've been playing music since third grade. Yeah. Right? When I got drafted into the city band. And later on in life, about middle school, I want to say Mike kind of yeah. followed into the pursuit. We messed around, dabbled back and forth, but... Wasn't until about high school we got serious with it. Yeah. We would sit down for hours, either in my basement or his basement, and just plug away. Yeah. Yeah. We sounded terrible. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> you ever do any radio or voiceovers or anything? Your voice is amazing. I haven't done too much radio. I've done a little bit of, um, you know, like side little acting and like short yeah. little reels, things like that. Never really took off. Yeah. I, um, pretty cool before doing <laughs> this i've made a couple of solo albums oh really Never yeah. really took off oh but i like i said i read write compose i rap sing it's oh, not no really kidding. much i can't do yeah know? yeah that's one thing about me you know if i can't learn if i don't know it give me three weeks and i'll learn it no that's, kidding that's always yeah. my motto give me three weeks no matter what it is i can learn it is any of your solo material online or? um no like i said this was uh, back in the day before gotcha. online was about so yeah, yeah this is when this became we kind of focused yeah heavily on 
Yeah, yeah. We're pretty late. Yeah, very cool. How many how many songs do you have in this band as far as original music? We have an album plus half of another album ready to come. Excellent, excellent. Like probably about 15, right? Like mm-hmm. the album's yeah. 10 plus yeah. at least another we got, five original. We got a Maybe lot of un- unreleased music that we haven't uh, mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. put the nail in the coffin quite yet. Yeah. Um, and this album, new album is going to be like outside of the box, like how Mike was saying, yeah, with just, different like sounds. Said, yeah. How Tom was saying, the, just the different sounds. Cool. So it's like with within the band we have so much different talent and so many different hidden tricks yeah like i said i, I rap we got christine has an amazing soulful voice so we're about to stop <laughs> working into like some r&b feels um, cool a little yeah. bit more into like mike likes the reggae scar we have a guitarist that likes the reggae so mm-hmm. like we're gonna just start opening up just different avenues and yeah continuing to press forward yeah very cool very cool well, listen. Um, we're uh, we're uh, approaching the uh, the witching hour. We're gonna have to start to wrap up, um, but uh, we're gonna play this track, Guardrail, uh, which I'm anxious to hear. But before we do that, uh, anything we didn't mention that you want to make sure we know about uh, shows coming up, or of course we want to make sure everyone knows how to find you uh, online on social media and all that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, also, this next song, Guardrail, we will be releasing a. Uh, music video here soon so watch out for for that drop yep. and yes. um like we mentioned earlier our next show is coming up in april april 30th yep. yes. at, um, um o'brien's at, Bob and yep, Alton. O'Brien's. and um if you want to find out more about it just go to our, our instagram pretty late ma and uh their link is in our bio with all our information and things like that you check us out on facebook it's the same thing pretty late on facebook mm-hmm. and we'll mm. You know, send us a message, and you know we'll we'll send you a T-shirt or yeah. something, and we'll invite you out to a show. Looking Excellent. forward to uh, to jamming and hanging out with everybody. <laughs> yes, very yeah. good, very good. All right, well, thank you all. It, it, it's wonderful to meet you, and I I love your sound. And uh, you. we're gonna close out absolutely. We're gonna play this uh, this last track, uh, Guardrail, and we'll finish out the show with that. And I do want to remind everybody, of course, if you're listening live on Friday, uh, make sure you stick around. Coming up next, we have Granite State of Mind with Rob Azevedo and Pauly Stone, and they've got a couple of great musical guests planned and then i'll be back tonight 8 to 11 p.m for retro spectrum radio with paulie c so it's a busy day a busy friday here at wmnh and we love it but uh thank you all again and uh we will leave you with this this is guardrail from pretty late to uh close out today is matt connerton unleashed Mm -hmm. 